drill and bass goes vaporwave. Okay. Honestly, I didn't expect anything from this album. I woke up at 4 a.m. on Friday, I watched an NBA match, uh, because I live in such time zone, and I wanted to check the album premieres out of the vlogger habit. And then I was like, hmm, am I hearing it right? I think it's actually pretty good. Then I checked Rate Your Music, and this is apparently his highest rated album since uh, 2004, which says a lot. So despite the climate changes, warp dinosaurs are not extinct yet. A last year plate dropped also a decent album. Before we continue to discuss Be Up a Hello, you can subscribe to my channel for more independent music videos. So if you see this guy for the first time, and if you think uh, Square Pusher is some geometric brother of Oval, you would be actually pretty close to the truth. Except Square Pusher is from UK, his real name is uh, Tom Jenkinson, and he got exposed to organ music at pretty young age because uh, his school was an affiliate of a cathedral. In the 80s as a teenager he played bass guitar in the bands that were supposed to be the second coming of Metallica. Fortunately in the 90s he took interest in electronic music and he belongs to one of those strong IDM artists who emerged mostly in the UK. Now as for 2020 album Be Up A Hello, the interesting thing is that he used vintage gear to record it. And while recording it he did several songs in just one go. It's crazy, I didn't know it, I didn't feel it at all. I, however, I did get the heavy vintage vibe, especially at the beginning. I found it particularly interesting, because the freshest trend in my country, in Poland, uh, is that underground electronic music producers uh, take these old nostalgic sounds and incorporate them into their heavily glitched productions. And the tag used for that is post-industrial, however, I think a post-vaporwave uh, gives it more of a justice. So I had a bit of a déjà vu moment, uh, hearing someone as accomplished as Square Pusher uh, doing the same thing in proper studio conditions, as my colleagues did two, three years ago in their bedrooms on their broken laptops. Well, it's not just the idea that it's interesting on Be Up A Hello, but also execution is good. The opening track Oberlov sounds like he is simply having fun. I think it uses uh, Canon D in some heavily botched way. <laughs> It's so bad that it's good, and it brings my mind th to those underground parties that I attended. There were like 15 people on the dance floor and everybody danced to their own tune, to their own thing in their head. And we had so much fun! This was pretty introspective, pretty cool. I appreciate that he's spontaneous and he puts freedom and fun in front of trying to impress the critics and the audience with some fancy experimental constructions. In my eyes, this is the most underrated thing in experimental music. And especially I noticed that when the artists grow older, become more accomplished, they try to outdo themselves and their like competition instead of coming back to the roots, uh, to what brought them here in the first place. I mean, simple solutions are often the very honest ones, right? So my main takeaway from the first part of this album is that it's... Uh, playful, fun, it's honest. And maybe also brings you to those moments at life when everything was simple, when you just wanted to dance until morning. And this album has a strong escapist factor. And I think you will appreciate it more when you're a little bit older, no offense, when you have to face the so-called adult life problems. And because there are parts on this album that remove them instantly. After the opening two songs, also Detroit People Mover has this post-vaporwave vibe, uh, this time delivered in a form of a slow, like, crying synth. Of course you will find here also typical club tracks, because actually it's an extremely danceable album and Square Pusher is a great beat maker. Also the last tracks have here properly grim moments. A terminal slam is pretty serious and dark, where beats go hysterical and at some point you even feel endangered. But the ending comes with this rainbow synth melody. Maker bass is even darker, but the end of the song is very up-tempo. Uh, it's like sending a message that you should forget your problems, uh, dance yourself away in some very manic way. However, 80 on Dula is like a wake-up call. <laughs> it's like you come back to reality, like you find yourself in some dark wet cave. <laughs> And yeah, like you're back in the real world, basically. Why did you have to spoil my party, Mr. Square Pusher? So for me personally, it went beyond music, hence my rating. Mm, it was all about the set of moods and emotion. And as such, I'm sure I'll have this album high on my list in 2020. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.